<laughs> How y'all doing? I'm the Watchman, and this is part two. Part two of the Mark of the Beast, 666, the mark that the beast left upon God's kingdom. I'm going to get right into it. Now, I knew, you know, comments and opinions going to fluctuate like this because there is so much confusion surrounding the Mark of the Beast. I haven't even mentioned what the mark is. And, you know, looking at some of the comments, you know, I smile, but it's sad in a way. It's sad in a way. You have to... You have to let the Bible interpret the Bible, you know, uh, the same way people can take bits and pieces of the Bible to fit what they believe personally is the same way that people can take prophecy, bits and pieces of prophecy to fit what they believe. And and just from the comments, you know, I was shown that, that hey, Josh, watch me. You didn't start at the beginning. You know, there's confusion about even what the fourth beast is and who the fourth beast is now the fourth beast itself is not the mark y'all i want to make this clear the, the 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 mark isn't a kingdom for people you know i'm starting to get the people believe that the mark itself is a kingdom no there's a kingdom that administers a mark the mark itself is not a kingdom but anyway the reason why there's confusion on who the fourth beast is anytime you see the word beast in prophecy it means kingdom so anytime you know the reason why there's so much confusion on who the fourth kingdom is is because a lot of people don't start at the beginning the beginning and I didn't yesterday and I should have you know what I mean and I should have but I'm going to do it now. And right before I do, right before I do, I want to thank Hashua Servant. You know, Hashua Servant, that's his channel page. He uh, he brought out a great point. And any great points I see getting brought out, I go back and I do my homework. I do my homework because, you know, some things are God-given and God-shown. And I got ahead of myself. I got ahead of myself concerning the three horns, the three kings that were plucked up. I named them as Great Britain. I got ahead of myself. Great Britain is in the feet of iron mixed with clay. The feet of iron mixed with clay. You know, he asked, could it be? He asked, he said, could those three horns be the three tribes that were destroyed? And that got me to thinking, you know, Josh, you blundered. So do your homework. It took me a couple hours, but I found the actual tribes and the dates that they were destroyed. So if anyone wants to look them up, because it proves, it proves even more. It still proves even more that this fourth kingdom is wrong. That this fourth kingdom is wrong. And when the little horn, when the little horn, because the little horn comes up out of the fourth kingdom, you know, first it was Rome. Then the Roman Catholic Church came into power out of Rome. You know, first the Caesars had the power. Then once the Roman Catholic Church came into power, the popes got the power. You know, the popes got the power. And three tribes were killed, were destroyed when the Pope, when the Pope had the power, when the little horn came about. Three tribes were destroyed. And the three tribes were the first one was the Heruli. H-E-R-U-L-I. The Heruli of four they were destroyed in 493 AD. 493 AD. The second tribe was the Vandals. And these are Germanic tribes out of the ten kings. The second king that was destroyed was the Vandals in 533 A.D. And the third tribe was the Ostrogoths. O-S-T-R-O-G-O-T-H. The Ostrogoths. And they were destroyed in 493 A.D. 493 A.D. It took me a couple hours to find it. But I love, that's what I love, searching the scriptures and searching history. To prove God even down to the minuscule of details. So thank you, Hashua servant. I definitely appreciate it. The watchman needed that. You know what I mean? Get got ahead of myself. And this is a subject that I definitely want the details to be exactly right. Detail upon detail. You know. But like I said, I haven't even spoke of what the mark actually is is and like i said i'm seeing now all you know that there's so much confusion that people actually believe that the beast itself is the mark no not at all the mark is going to shock you what it actually is and that is why millions upon millions fall to it really the word says he calls it all but anyway we're going to get to that we definitely going to get to that but turning your bibles to daniel 2 daniel 2 Daniel 2, 31-30. This is the foundation of all last day prophecy. 
If you do not understand the dream of Nebuchadnezzar when he had the image of the five kingdoms that will rule this world, then any interpretation you get off of prophecy is going to be wrong. Any interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar, for those who don't know, Nebuchadnezzar was given a dream by God starting at his kingdom, Babylon. He was given a dream by God and he had a dream of the five kingdoms that would rule the world until Jesus came. And, and even in that dream, Jesus came as a stone and hit the bottom of the statue and shattered it and break it into pieces. Meaning there wasn't going to be no more kingdoms after this fifth kingdom. So if your kingdom, who you believe is the mark of the beast, isn't even in Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the only five kingdoms that will rule the world, then you must start from scratch. Pray about it and start from scratch. But this is the foundation of all Bible prophecy, last day Bible prophecy anyway. Now let's see what five kingdoms this, this is. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 31. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, this is Daniel interpreting the dream for Nebuchadnezzar. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, and his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in the pieces and break them in the pieces now and then and later on in the chapter you know daniel breaks down which kingdom was which kingdom and just to show you that these were kingdoms with each color i'm gonna read skim through it real quick skim through it real quick and it's still in daniel 2 and i'm gonna start i'm gonna start at 37 start at 37 thou o king are the king of kings for the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom power strength and glory and whithersoever the children of men dwell the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven have given thee have given hath he given unto thine hand and have made thee ruler over them all thou art this head of gold Babylon was the head of gold Babylon was the head of gold and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes potter's part of potter's clay and part of iron that kingdom, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with the miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Now let's get into it. Now the head of gold is Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. The, the next to rule, the chest and the arms of silver, is the Medo-Persians. The Medo-Persians under Darius the Mede. Darius the Mede. If y'all saw 300... The movie 300, Artaxerxes, he was the son, he was a uh, family off of Darius the Mede and uh, Cyrus the Persian. You know, the Mede, the Medians, the Medes and the Persians came together and they defeated Babylon. And they defeated Babylon. And when Artaxerxes was in power, and when he, when he, first it was Darius the Mede, then it was, uh, I want to say Cyrus the Persian, I might be wrong. But uh, when Artaxerxes, who was the son of one of those when he got into power when he got into power he got the big head and god took the kingdom from him and that's when su the supposed story of 300 takes place right before greece right before greece defeated medo persia and of course and greece are the belly and the thighs of brass is greece and they defeated it under alex alexander the great that was under alexander the great now the legs of iron were wrong Who's the next to defeat Greece, y'all? We know in history it was Rome, the Roman Empire. Um, Julius Caesar, the Roman Empire were the next to defeat Greece and rule the world, rule the whole world. They were the legs of iron. And the feet of iron and clay is USA and Europe, the United Nations. They say of iron and clay 
mixed together. They were part strong and part weak. But the, way, the thing about iron and clay is, is even though it's together, they'll never mix. They'll never mix. Okay. Now, but I had to go through that structure. If you don't understand that structure of the five kingdoms that will rule the world, then if 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 you don't understand that, then pretty much any interpretation that you have of last day prophecy will be wrong. Will be wrong. For that right there is the foundation of all last day prophecy. Of all last day prophecy. It told the five the only five kingdoms that will rule the whole world until Jesus comes as the stone and shatters the image and shatters the image okay I definitely want to get back into it now the fourth beast Rome has a little horn that arises and we know this is the Roman Catholic Church the Roman Catholic Church as I now this is picking up to where we left off in part one where we left off in part one now, for as we know, now I'm going to show some things to sh actually show that this is the Roman Catholic Church. For even though I went through the, uh, go to Daniel 7, verse 25, where it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. You know, that's, like we say, you know, that's confession saying, God, I can do what you do. You know, shall wear out the saints of the Most High. More Christians have died behind the Catholic sword than any other than any other behind the sword of any other religion you think more more Muslims have killed more Christians but I beg to differ for when the before before Rome before the Roman Catholic Church became Christian when it was illegal to kill illegal to be a Christian they killed Christians by the millions by the millions by the millions and he shall think to change times and laws now this is big y'all cuz the Catholic Church are the only religion on earth that says I have the authority to change God's law and I, I even went to the Catholic websites on uh, part three of the papacy casting down the century and actually read them off and I'm gonna do it again on here but I, I, I stress to y'all now this is a, a factor Daniel 725 this factor has to be weighed in in your choice and your seeing of who this little horn is for there is only one entity and that is the Roman Catholic Church that brags that they are that they can change God's law that no that not they, they can that they did change God's law and where did they say they got their power from? They said because the people follow it. They took the second commandment out there. Thou should not have unto thee any graven images. They completely took that out. And they changed the Sabbath day to Sunday. And, and, and for those who still don't think that they changed it, which they, they don't hide it, they admit it. Just Google. Just go straight to Google. You don't have to go to Wikipedia or nothing. Well, you can if you want. But just Google. Catholic Church changes Sabbath to Sunday and watch what pops up. Pop, 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 pop. Go to their websites and type it in and watch what they tell you. They brag about it. They brag about it. And so right there, they are the only ones who admits and brags about changing God's law. The little horn is clearly the papacy. And they say, and we see that right there, right? Well, let's read 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Do you know this? This uh, Antichrist spirit and uh, entity, this little horn is described again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Well, let's read verse 3 first. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Quick lesson what Paul was talking about right there when he says there come a falling away first. That was when Caesar, because think about when, when Paul was alive, Caesar was in power. Caesar was in power. And when he says a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, when Caesar lost his power, to who? The Pope. The Pope is who he's talking about where he says, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He's talking about the Pope. Then he describes the son of perdition, who opposeth. And exalteth himself above all that is called God. Who who else sits in God's temple and says, I can forgive your sins like God? Who else sits in God's house and says, if you don't want to pray to Jesus, you can you can uh pray through me. I'm just like Christ, you know, if not higher, you know. Above all that is called God or that is worship. So that he is as God sitting in the temple of God. It's nothing 
but the papacy. Nothing but the papacy. Now, my time is running out. 